Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding GBAS. This presentation will give you a short technical introduction to GBAS, or the ground-based augmentation system, and the role of GBAS in modern aviation. There are two fundamental tasks in aeronautical navigation, namely, how do we find the airport and how do we land the plane? Traditional radio frequency navigational aids, or nav aids, include VOR and DME, which provide azimuth and range information. Approach and landing may be done visually and or with the help of ILS, the Instrument Landing System. VOR, DME, and ILS are very widely used, but in recent years, different global navigation satellite systems, for example, GPS, have been gaining in importance for both navigation and approach. However, standard non-augmented GNSS lacks the required accuracy for navigation or approach. The greatest sources of positioning error in GNSS are ionospheric and, to a lesser extent, tropospheric irregularities. We can measure the amount of error by using precisely surveyed ground reference locations. In other words, we compare a known, precisely surveyed location to the location that we calculate from the received GNSS signals. Error correction data can then be computed and sent to special geostationary satellites, which retransmit these corrections using the same frequency as the normal GNSS signals. The use of this error correction data can increase position accuracy by roughly an order of magnitude. These types of systems are referred to as SBAS, or space-based augmentation systems, since GNSS receivers obtain augmentation data from satellites that are in orbit, that is, in space. SBAS systems provide corrections over wide geographical areas, generally for a given continent or large country. Let's look at a specific example of SBAS. The SBAS for North America is referred to as WAS, or the Wide Area Augmentation System. As mentioned a moment ago, an SBAS typically provides corrections over continent or country-sized areas, so there are different SBASs for different parts of the world. For example, EGNOS in Europe, MSAS in Japan, Gagan in India, etc. Although the technical details may differ, each of these systems provides similar functionality. In the case of WAS, the accuracy provided is specified to be 7.6 meters. And, in addition to providing improved position accuracy, WAS can also provide warnings about satellites with unreliable navigation information. That is, WAS improves reliability as well as accuracy. Note that while WAS accuracy is sufficient for general navigation, that is, flying from one airport to another, it is not sufficient for GNSS-based approaches or landings. The Ground-Based Augmentation System, or GBAS, is a way of enhancing the accuracy and reliability of GNSS, such that it can be used for approach and landing, something that's not possible with SBAS. Similar to SBAS, GBAS signals are received at very precisely surveyed positions, but instead of these locations being scattered around a country or a continent, in GBAS, the reference locations are located on or near a given airport. The difference between the GNSS-derived positions and the actual survey positions is calculated in a way very similar to SBAS. However, since GBAS only covers a relatively small area, that is, an airport, instead of a country or a continent, the correction accuracy is much higher than in SBAS. The differential correction and reference station data are then transmitted to an approaching aircraft over a terrestrial VHF data link instead of via satellites as an SBAS. This is why we refer to GBAS as a ground-based augmentation system. Note that in addition to GNSS correction data, this VHF data link can also be used to communicate approach or arrival procedures as well. Let's look at the different components in a GBAS system. Around the airport, a set of precisely surveyed reference stations communicate with a GBAS ground subsystem in order to collect position data and calculate the differential offsets or corrections. This correction data is then transmitted to approaching aircraft using a VHF data broadcast signal. An onboard multimode receiver uses both the GNSS satellite signals as well as this ground-based correction data to obtain the augmented accuracy and reliability that are needed for approach and landing using GNSS. Here's an aerial view of a GBAS installation at an airport. There are four reference receivers in different locations, which send their information to a nearby GBAS facility shelter. 
After computing and formatting the correction data, this information is transmitted using the VHF data link antenna. Note that unlike traditional ILS glide slope and localizer antennas, the GPS reference receiver antennas do not need to be located along the sides or at the ends of the runway, and a single set of reference stations can be used to provide corrections for all runways at a particular airport. Since GBAS reference receiver locations are not tied to a particular runway, GBAS only requires one station per airport and not one or more stations per runway, which is a substantial advantage compared to traditional ILS glide slope or localizer. This in turn also minimizes the amount of flight inspection required to verify Navate accuracy and performance. Another important benefit of GBAS is that it enables curved or other complex approaches they can avoid problems due to things like obstacles or terrain, noise restricted areas, or approach patterns at nearby airports. Before moving on, let's review the similarities and differences between GBAS and SBAS. These two technologies are similar in that they both provide corrections using measurements made at precisely surveyed ground locations. These corrections are then used to provide both improved position accuracy as well as satellite integrity information. However, GBAS and SBAS are different in a number of important ways. First, an SBAS covers an entire country or continent, whereas GBAS only covers a relatively small area, such as an airport. These more localized correction measurements mean that GBAS accuracy is substantially better than the accuracy provided by SBAS. And as the name implies, SBAS signals are received from satellites in space that transmit on standard GNSS frequencies. GBAS, on the other hand, uses a ground-based VHF radio data link to communicate with nearby aircraft. A key part of GBAS is the VDB, or VHF Data Broadcast. GNSS correction data and airport facility data are transmitted from the ground subsystem to the airborne subsystem using a one-way VHF data broadcast. The frequency range for these broadcasts is 108 to 117.975 MHz divided into 25 kilohertz channels. Each channel is time division multiplexed into 500 millisecond frames, and each frame is further subdivided into eight time slots. GBAS information is encoded into different types of messages that are sent as a burst within each time slot. Remember that in addition to differential offset information for correcting position errors, GBAS messages may also contain information for pilots regarding things like approach and arrival procedures. With regards to testing GBAS, DO253 contains two categories of recommended tests for GBAS. The first category addresses RF and lower level functionality, for example, varying the symbol rate or decoding messages in the presence of noise and interference. The second category addresses the ability of the receiver to process different types of GBAS messages, including errored or unsupported messages. Note that testing a multi-mode receiver on an aircraft often requires the generation of both the GBAS signals as well as the dynamic simulation of a GNSS constellation. For example, we might want to test that the multi-mode receiver correctly incorporates correction data or excludes satellites whose signals are faulty or unreliable. Vector signal generators can be used to create both GBAS and GNSS signals for testing these receivers, both with and without added noise or interferes. For testing GBAS installations, field or flight inspection tools can be used to decode and or analyze the live, over-the-air GBAS signals. Let's summarize what we've covered. Regular or non-augmented GNSS does not provide sufficient accuracy or reliability for use in aviation applications. The use of SBAS, the space-based augmentation system, enables the use of GNSS for navigation. But GBAS, the ground-based augmentation system, is required for GNSS-supported approach and landing. In GBAS, differential position corrections are derived by comparing locations of precisely surveyed on-field locations with the locations derived from the GNSS satellite signals. After the correction data has been calculated and formatted, it's sent to approaching aircraft in the form of a VHF data broadcast. Two different types of instruments can be used to test GBAS. First, vector signal generators can be used to create and configure both the VHF data broadcast as well as to simulate the dynamic, realistic signals from GNSS constellations. 
And secondly, field or flight inspection tools can be used to capture, decode, and analyze live over-the-air GBAS signals for troubleshooting and analysis. This concludes our presentation, Understanding GBAS. If you'd like to learn more about GBAS, other avionics technologies, or solutions for generating and analyzing GBAS signals, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.